So for the last six months, I've had my Gmail account configured to automatically delete any emails older than seven days from my inbox that I haven't starred or marked as important. And it's been wonderful. As of this writing, I have less than 150 emails in my inbox and I've spent literally zero time organizing them. And I was able to set this up using a very basic programming script, less than 100 lines of code running in Google's own apps script service. Now, AppScript is basically a scripting console that Google provides that allows you to write JavaScript to interact with many of Google's services, including Gmail. And two things are really great about this setup. First, it's free. When I originally had the idea that I wanted automatically deleting my emails, I was looking for some third party add on that would do it for me. And I probably would have paid like five bucks a month if I had found one that did the task well. So I'm actually glad I didn't find anything that met my needs since the script I ended up using works perfectly and doesn't cost me a cent. And the second benefit of doing it myself is I don't have to give some random third party add on access to my email. By solving the problem using a script I created and installed myself, that concern was alleviated. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how to set this system up for your own Gmail account. But first, I wanna briefly touch on why I did this. Now, over the last several years, I've noticed that the majority of the content that hits my personal email has kind of changed a bit. Conversations with friends and family have mostly moved to dedicated chat apps like iMessage, WhatsApp, or Google Hangouts. And I've been pretty diligent about unsubscribing from any unwanted periodical email. And you know what's left is kind of what I categorize as notification emails. And this probably makes up 95% of the email I receive day to day. Things like your package is out for delivery. A large credit card transaction has been approved. We've detected motion on your living room camera. And I don't really want to unsubscribe from all of these kinds of notifications as I do get value from being notified in the moment. However, notification emails like these are really only relevant the first time you see them or maybe for a few days at most. And the downside is unless you're really disciplined about like inbox zero, then they start to stack up. And a few years go by and then you're sitting on tens of thousands of emails that need to be archived or deleted. What's worse is the few emails that you might actually wanna keep are mixed in with all of the noise described above. So by switching things to retain email on an opt-in basis instead of an opt-out basis where you have to manually delete everything, all of these problems go away with practically zero effort. So let's dive in. You know, as I mentioned at the outset, Google Apps Script is the tool we'll be using to automatically delete our email. Let's take a minute to look at the Apps Script documentation to get a sense of what's possible. All right, now if we navigate over to developers.google.com slash Apps Script, and then expand the G Suite services in the left-hand menu, click into Gmail, we can see that the service lets us conduct a variety of Gmail account management tasks, which seems kind of vague, but it's probably what we're looking for. So let's take a look below at the list of available classes. We'll start by clicking into the Gmail app class, which from what we can see in the documentation provides a ton of methods to interact with Gmail. And for our purposes, the method we're interested in is the search method, which we'll, we'll use to search our inbox for the email that we want automatically deleted. And as you can see from the documentation, the search method returns an array of Gmail thread objects. And that's just programmer speak for a list of mail that matches our search. And if we click into the Gmail thread class, we can see a list of available methods we can call on our Gmail thread object. The most relevant for our purposes is the move to trash method, which when invoked moves a Gmail thread object to the trash. So that's kind of our proof of concept. It's clear based on the documentation that we can set up a script that accomplishes what we want, which as a reminder is to automatically delete email that matches some search of our inbox. Okay though, before we move on to the deletion script, since we're gonna be deleting email in bulk automatically using tools we don't fully understand, it's probably a good idea for you to back up your entire Gmail account offline before proceeding. So to back up your email, you'd first navigate over to takeout.google.com, and if you have multiple accounts, make sure that you've selected the correct one. Now takeout.google.com is a tool that Google provides that allows you to download your data from all of the services that they offer. As you can see by default, all of the different services are pre-selected, but since we're just interested in Gmail, let's click deselect all, navigate down to mail, and then check the box on the right. You can see that it's gonna archive the email into an inbox file. This can then be opened on your computer using free email clients like Apple Mail or Mozilla Thunderbird. And just to be safe, we'll go ahead and leave the default to include all mail data. Then scroll down all the way to the bottom, click next step. And we'll just leave the default delivery method of send download link via email. We'll set export type as a one-time archive. We'll leave the file type as zip. And to simplify our download later, we'll change the maximum zip size to 50 gigabytes. Then we click create archive. And you can see the message and archive of your mail data is currently being prepared. Please note that the archive may take a long time, possibly hours or days to complete. So then a few hours later, once the email is received, click download archive and download the zip file. 
I recommend you unzip the archive and open it up in the mail client of your choice in order to verify that the backup worked before proceeding. I kind of also recommend that you back up this zip file somewhere safe. If you happen to be running an iOS machine, here's how to open it up in Apple Mail. Go to File, click Import Mailboxes, select Files in MBox Format, then click Continue and navigate to the folder where you unzip the takeout download. Then inside the mail folder, select the MBox file and click Choose. That progress bar they see will never move, but eventually you'll start seeing a number next to the import folder incrementing upwards. Now, if you have a lot of mail, it might take a while. I believe my original backup of almost like 250,000 messages took almost an hour for Apple Mail to finish processing on a relatively modern MacBook Pro. Once that inbox file is loaded into a mail client, you can search and view all of your old emails whenever you want, just like before when it was in Gmail. All right, now that we've verified our backup, let's go ahead and create the script that will automatically purge our emails. Let's start by heading over to script.google.com. Now, before we were looking at the apps script documentation, which lives on developer.google.com. Now we're looking at the actual dashboard where we can create, edit, and execute our apps scripts scripts. <sighs> what a terrible name. If you look at this navigation sidebar, we're currently on the My Projects tab. And if this is your first time using apps script, then the list will obviously be empty with this no projects message. So let's change that by creating a new project now. We'll click on project in the upper left, and that new project opens in a very simple integrated development environment, or IDE. And in the upper left is the project name, which is currently set to untitled project. Let's go ahead and change that to purge old emails. In the left-hand bar, you can see a list of files included in this project. For a new project, there's only one file present by default called code.gs, which is the file we have open right now. Now our purge emails project is gonna be relatively simple, so this is the only file that we're gonna need. And inside of the code.js file, we can see there's already one function present called my function, which is currently empty. Let's update that function to be called purge and then click save. Now above that, you have the code execution toolbar where you can select a function and execute it. Since we just have the one function, which we just renamed to purge, in the dropdown is the only available function purge. So let's go ahead and update the purge function to log something to the console. And we can do that by copying and pasting in console.log, hello world. And then from the execution toolbar, we select our purge function, click run. And if we then jump back to the app script dashboard, click on my executions, we can see that the purge function was in fact called in our purge old emails project just a couple of seconds ago. We can see how long it took to complete and whether the function executed without error. And if we click on the execution itself, it expands to show the log Hello world. So that's how you execute a function manually. But what about automatically triggering a function to run every single day? I mean, this is obviously something we'll need for our purge old email script to automatically purge our old emails. So to do this, we'll set up an app scripts, apps script installable trigger. Looking at the documentation again, you can see installable triggers let apps script run a function automatically when a certain event, such as opening a document, occurs. Now, there are several additional types of events, including time-driven or clock triggers. And that sounds like what we'll need if we want this script to execute every day. So let's go ahead and jump down to the documentation on time-driven triggers. We can see that time-driven triggers let scripts execute at a particular time or on a reoccurring interval. Boom, that sounds perfect. So it's clear, we'll need to work with triggers in our script. Let's jump back to our project for a minute, create a new function called set trigger, and inside we'll add this block of code. Basically what this is doing is we're calling the new trigger method on the script app object to create a time-based trigger, and that trigger in turn calls our purge method 30 seconds after the set trigger function is executed. So let's go ahead and update our log message to say hello from trigger, move up to the execution bar, select the set trigger function, and click execute which of course means that our purge function should be triggered 30 seconds from now. Now at this point, we will be prompted to give the app some permissions. We'll click review permissions and then confirm which account we want to authorize and finally give the project permission to run while we're not present, which is the only permission it needs right now, and then we'll click allow. Now while we count to 30, head back to the dashboard, click on the my triggers menu item, and in the list of project triggers, we can see a new entry for our purge old emails project. We can see that it's a time-based trigger and that when triggered, it calls our purge function inside the project. Currently last run or the last time the trigger was called is null because we loaded this page before 30 seconds had passed. But if we refresh the page, we can see it's been updated to disabled. Now, if we click into it, we can see that the trigger has expired. This is because we set up our trigger to only fire exactly one time, 30 seconds after the set trigger function was called. Now, one issue we're gonna to have to deal with is that these time-based triggers will persist in this disabled state. And since our project is limited to only 20 triggers, that can lead to some errors. 
So when we write our email deletion script, we'll need to remember to clean up any completed triggers. All right, let's head back to the My Executions tab where we can see two new execution entries. The first is the set trigger function that we called from the editor. And then 30 seconds later, we can see there was the time-driven execution of our purge function. And sure enough, when we click on the time-driven record, our log entry says, hello from trigger. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about Google's apps, scripts, scripts, for the rest of the video, let's jump back to the editor to write the rest of the code for our purge old emails project. So I have all of the code that we're gonna be using saved in this GitHub gist, which I've linked down in the description below. Let's just copy and paste the entire block into our Google Apps Script IDE and then click Save. Just a quick note, I'm gonna walk through this script pretty quickly just to give a brief overview of what exactly it's doing for those who may be interested. But don't worry if none of it makes sense. You don't really need to understand any of this to get the script to work. Just copy and pasting from the gist and executing our set purge trigger function is all that you really need to do. All right, let's get into it. Starting at the top, we define two constants. The first, delete after days, is how old the message must be before it's deleted. Here I'm setting that to seven days. Next, we define a constant called page size, which I've set to 150. This is the number of messages that our purge function will attempt to delete each time it's invoked. Now, deleting emails is kind of a slow process, and in Google Apps script land, a single function call can't run for longer than six minutes. So if you need to delete thousands of emails, then we don't want to attempt that in a single execution or a function will time out. And that's why we're limiting it to 150, which in my experience takes around 30 seconds to delete. Next, we'll define a few helper functions. There's one that sets a trigger to invoke our main purge function once per day. That's the one that we'll be using to like install the script once we have everything set up. Now below that is a function to create a trigger that calls a purge more function in exactly two minutes. Immediately after that, we have a function that removes any triggers that call the purge more function. This is necessary because as you'll see below, a large inbox could end up with way more than 20 purge more triggers set, which if not deleted would cause errors due to the project's 20 trigger limit. Next is a function that will delete all of the triggers of any type for this project. And this would be the function you should call if you ever want to uninstall the script to stop it from running every day. After that, we have a function called purge more. This is just a wrapper for our main purge function that is triggered anytime the number of messages that it needs deleting exceeds our page size constant, which is 150 messages in this case. Finally, we have our main purge function and that encapsulates all of the actual logic that we'll be using to delete the old emails. So let's look at that purge function more closely. The first thing the purge function does is make a call to the remove purge more triggers function. And as I mentioned before, it's critical to clean up any completed or disabled, as Google likes to call them, triggers before continuing, since the app script projects are limited to a maximum of 20 triggers. We obviously don't want to delete the trigger that directly calls our purge method every day, which is why we want to keep the purge more stuff as sort of a separate function with a distinct trigger. Next, we're defining our search string and saving it to a variable here. We're searching for all emails in our inbox that are not starred and are not important that are older than the number of days defined in our delete after days variable. In this case, seven days. And if you wanna test out your search, you can take that search string over to your Gmail, remove the quotes, hard code the number of days, and see what mail matches. Remember, any mail that matches this search is the mail that will be deleted by the code that comes next in the remainder of our purge function. Jumping back to the code, we next call the search method on the Gmail app object which if we recall when we looked at the documentation, passing it a search string as the first parameter, zero is the offset and our page size constant as the third. Now, when executed, this searches our Gmail inbox for the first 150 messages that match our search string and saves the array of resulting Gmail thread objects to a new variable called threads. Next, we check to see if the number of message threads returned is equal to our page size constant. And if so, then we'll assume that there's more than 150 messages that matched our search string. And so we will set a trigger to invoke the purge more function in exactly two minutes. And we'll log the number of threads being purged during this run and define a cutoff date object by subtracting our delete after days variable from the current date and time. In our case, this makes the cutoff date exactly seven days before the current time. Then for each Gmail thread object that matched our search, We'll check to see if the most recent message in the thread is before our cutoff. And if so, we will move the entire thread to the trash by calling the move to trash method on the object. And that's it. That wasn't so bad, right? So the next step is to manually execute our purge function just to make sure that it works. When you do so for the first time, you're gonna be asked again to grant your app permission to access your email. Select the Gmail account that you'd like to give access to, but this time because your app isn't published or reviewed by Google and it's requesting permission to access sensitive email data, you're gonna get a warning that you should avoid this app. 
But remember, this is your own app, so you can safely ignore the warning by clicking Advanced and then clicking on Go to Purge Old Emails link. And that will take you to the permissions page where you are asked to grant your script permission to read, compose, send, and permanently delete all of your email from Gmail. And once you click allow, the purge method will begin executing. Now, as I mentioned before, because we're only deleting 150 emails at a time, it may take a number of cycles to kind of delete everything if you have a lot of old mail built up. So keep an eye on your executions tab and your Gmail inbox to make sure that the script is still re-triggering itself to grab a fresh 150 messages every couple of minutes. Here, because this is the first time I'm running it on a mailbox with a lot of built-up mail, looking at the logs, we see it's processing the maximum of 150 threads and is setting triggers to invoke the purge more function again in two minutes. We also see that the first run completed successfully and took 23.5 seconds to delete those first 150 emails. Once two minutes has passed, our purge more function is triggered to grab a new set of 150 emails. It too exceeded our page size and therefore set a trigger to call the purge more function yet again in another two minutes. Now, because this inbox has thousands of emails, this is gonna go on for quite a while with each invocation of our purge more method happening two minutes after the last until all of the emails in my inbox older than seven days that haven't been starred or marked as important have been deleted. Now, since the purge method seems to be working, let's go ahead and install our script by manually executing the set purge trigger function. With this trigger in place, our purge method will automatically be invoked every day to clear out any new email that has crossed that seven day threshold. One note, because we programmed our script to move matching threads to the trash, the message won't be permanently deleted for another 30 days. So if you need to free up space right away, you're gonna need to go to the trash and permanently delete the items that have been moved there. The rest of the time, however, having this extra 30 day buffer, is actually really nice to have. There's been a couple of times where I forgot to star or archive or mark something I needed as important. And luckily I caught it before the 30 days were up and I was able to pull it from the trash. I mean, that said, Google does a really good job of identifying emails as important. Usually any correspondence with a real human. However, no amount of automation is perfect. So if an important email comes in that you know you wanna keep, you need to remember to designate it accordingly. What's really great about this system is that starred or important, but aren't archived email starts to stack up at the end of your inbox after seven days. Then it becomes super easy to sort through by simply archiving anything you wanna keep or removing the important designation from any email you'd like to be deleted during the next daily purge. I typically spend less than a minute sorting through these about once a month, since there's usually less than 50 emails that have accumulated. Thanks again, and I will see you in the next video.